Bob. BBD. Here we go. Little bit about what our coats are up to. One of the major pillars of our constitution. What are they doing? Right. Some interesting statements being made by them. One of them is I find quite interesting and thought provoking. Don't invoke sedition to quieten disquiet, says court grant bails to two. Because the sedition really, really is getting misused, right? So as it goes on and says, this is Dharmendra Rana, the additional session judge says again, don't use sedition law to quieten disquiet. Finally, figure things out. Then you have, let's try not to put everyone in jail, says Supreme Court. And damn right. And that a lot has to do with the fact that bail is just not given all the time and everybody's appealing his bail. Even with the most insignificant of cases, where the guy is just not really going to run away. Then you have one by Supreme Court. Protest can't be anytime, everywhere. Supreme Court junks review plea against Shaheen protest order. Well, I guess they've called it right in this case, right? Just like the protester has the right to protest, I think a normal individual also has the right to continue with his with his uh, day to day life without any uh, impediment. However, what I'd like this is to be balanced, balanced because I think all these these uh, protests in Shaheen Bagh and whatever is happening only because the fundamental place for protest which used to be around Jantar Mantar has the, the, for some reason has been banned and that is what is essentially causing all these problems right permission needs to be given in areas because where visibility is there otherwise what's the point of a protest I can't protest outside my house nobody's going to no, nobody's really going to come and see right and it's going to have no impact but like I said what thing the Supreme Court really needs to do is process as punishment. Supreme Court must scrap sedition, consider bail in long pending UAP, uh, UAPA case. And this is really important because once the government apparently uses a sedition, this guy is in jail without bail. And that is extremely, extremely risky for our democracy. Right? But like I've been, I've been pointing out, the Allahabad High Court has been orders from there have set the bar and some of the orders that have come out are one was anti-CAA protesters posters banners the HC had in March 2020 taken strongest exception to banners being put up by the state government then there was Dr. Kafil Khan's detention under NSA six months after he was being on one charge another it was in September 2020 when Kafil Khan got out of got off, of the, hook, got off the hook then expressed concern over misuse of slaughter law. Then right to choose, this is important, right to choose life partner, a fundamental right. Women have right to live on own terms. These are all things coming out of the Allahabad High Court, which is unbelievable, right? You're considering the government that's there. Right? Abuse of power in Tablighi Jamaat case. Government drops anti-conversion charge after HC protection. Notice before interfaith marriage not mandatory, anti-conversion ordinance scrutiny. So these are really, really important observations made by the by the Allahabad High Court. I, I, I hope the rest of the High Courts would follow the same. Now let's see what's happening in the economy, right? Corporate earnings gather pace in December quarter despite COVID. India may have turned the quarter in quarter three. But if that's the case, folks, this is it. It's all about the, the big Indian in the India Incorporated. That's what it says. It's all about earnings, it's about the stock market. It's not about the MSMEs, it's not about employment, it's not about demand creation. So in that in that sense, I think you know you have a situation where this 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 number theory, the Hindustan Times, right? Rural demand engine choking once again, and that will be a tragedy, right? Food inflation has collapsed, but non-food prices continue to rise. Fall in food inflation is being driven by items which matter in the agri-production basket. 
So real rural wages have been contracting for four months now. So there goes a demand that was holding up a, 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 a demand for these corporates during this pandemic. RBI Consumer Confidence Survey data corroborates the urban labor market weakness story. So it's not it does not show or pretend well for the long term. So basically, it's it's one of those things that we see that's happened now may or may not continue if there is not a demand impetus here. As uh, Ruchir Sharma has rightly put that, you know, reforms need to be done and this is as good as the time as any and he's probably right. But in most of these cases, the critical part is has to be demand creation. How we go about doing it without busting our budgets or deficits is something to know. So he says again, number theory, recovery of economy showing mixed signals. Defaults on retail loans are declining but remain very high. Housing loan growth has been de-accelerating uh, de despite moderation in house prices and interest rates. This was one of the things that they thought was going to be an engine. Private sector investment activity continues to disappoint and this is critical. And like I said, things are not hunky-dory in this nation when you have about 7,000 wealthy Indians left country in 2019, says report. Indian rich top world in looking to leave country. Now the point is 7,000, right? If everybody has a crore, at least minimum, right? I think it's much more the people who are leaving. You're talking about 7,000 crores that just left the country. And he's right. There is, there is defense of private enterprise as critical, but it has to be transparent. It cannot seem to be crony capitalism. That's critical. And like I just said, the, the, even though uh, the prime minister and everybody seems to be hoping the private sector will pull the, the, the economy out, but what is seen on the ground is just not happening, right? Then you have, will bring all stakeholders on board on privatization. I, as an, as an Indian, actually believe in privatization. I have nothing against it, but it has to be done transparently. And I, I'm all for government monetizing all its assets, which are all these PSUs. So as PM says, PM bats for PPP says need to have a meeting of mind, surely. And these are the good things that have come out of the PLI. Amazon to make devices in Chennai with China source with, with cut China sourcing. This is for the fire stick. Really, really impressive, right? Now look at what's happening in the world that we should really, really be keeping a close look and that's where the money is. US finance chiefs weigh how to spend vast corporate cash piles. Hey guys, hey India. Hey India Inc. Hey government, that is where you should be going and selling India. But but like I said, Federal Reserve sees trouble in commercial realty, corporate debt in stress tests, and that's exactly what is happening in India to for and expected to happen, right? And what we uh, what other thing that worried me was this is the economy. What other thing that worried me was. Finger on your lips, youth uprising on social media, worried parents ask kids to lie low. Now this is when you're going down a wrong route, when parents have to worry about their children, but the fear is of the government, not about some, some person who's going to kidnap them, right? And why does that happen? At meeting with murder's victim, family Kapil Mishra talks of jihad and terror. Visiting the family of 25-year-old Rinku Sharma, in Mangorpuri called the murder jihad and an organized conspiracy to target those collecting funds for the Ram Mandir. And this, folks, like I said, is the, is the weaponization of the collection for the Ram Mandir. And this is extremely divisive and divisive. Cheers.